Fatty on fire. Bayern hit top form. Newcastle's new era after a losing start and a chance around up all coming up in the next few minutes. As I'm your host, Matt Frodick. You are the one footballers and this is the Daily News. So first up, and Ansu Fati is really taking that number 10 shirt seriously as he made his first start in over a year and put in a blinding performance in Barcelona's victory over Valencia. And honestly, I'm a little bit stunned by it. Like, if you haven't seen the highlights already, go and check out, especially Ansu Fati's goal. It was so Messi-esque. It's the only way I can describe it. Edge of the box, neat interchange with the strikers and getting the ball back and finding the bottom corner. It was unbelievable. And it looks as though he's really going to be carrying the torch for this Barcelona side. Pretty much what they wanted, seeing as they gave him Lionel Messi's old shirt. I just didn't expect it so soon. Like He's back from injury, like I mentioned, his first start, and he puts in a brilliant performance that also saw Sergio Aguero make his long-awaited debut for the club. He's been injured since joining Manchester City and actually came on for the last few minutes, but obviously didn't have too much time to really impact the game. The match also saw Philip Coutinho get on the score sheet. What is going on at Barcelona? Maybe they really have turned a new corner and just in time as they face Real Madrid next weekend. But on top of all of this, the one one problem that it does bring is that Ansu Fati can probably ask for a little bit more money and a, well, whatever contract he wants when it comes to the new discussions. It runs out next summer and apparently he only wants a two-year deal and has rejected the one billion euro release clause that we've seen put on the likes of Pedri as well. That's because, well, Ansu Fati clearly wants to keep his options a little bit more open with only a two-year deal and basically a billion euros means no one, not even Newcastle, are probably going to pay that to release him from the club. So it looks like Fati, like I mentioned, does want to have a few options open for the future but for now it's all about getting back playing football and that's exactly what he's doing with Barcelona and again it was such a magnificent performance at the weekend and talking of good performances we end up at Bayern Munich of course we do they were actually level with Bayern Leverkusen before the weekend but form is temporary class is permanent and when Bayern want to turn it on just like that, they're in astonishing form. 5-0 up at half-time. And it looks at the moment that maybe, just maybe, they could be playing their way to favourites for some of the biggest competitions this season. Of course, we're only on match day three in the likes of the Champions League as they face Benfica this week. But in this kind of form, there is nobody, nobody who could stop them in Europe at the minute. They were just ridiculously good. Julian Nagelsmann's taken over and really given Bayern this attacking threat. And like I mentioned before, when you've got the players that they've got, especially Robert Lewandowski, who bagged two goals. It's not going to be easy, but certainly easier than other teams who don't have this attacking threat. But like I mentioned, Ogden's got them playing in such a good fashion. They were so dominant. And after they did their work, they pretty much just sat back and didn't really have much else to do apart from concede one goal. Now, what it also means is that Robert Lewandowski is going head-to-head -head with Erling Haaland for the top goal scorer in the league. Haaland made a return from injury and back two goals for Dortmund over the weekend, which, very, very briefly, before Munich's morning of Leverkusen, saw Dortmund head to the top of the Bundesliga. We always think there's going to be a race. Every year, oh, it's going to be a little bit close, and eventually Bayern Munich just pull away and... Well, I don't want to make a prediction too early, but it's probably going to happen again this season. But moving on, though, and to the Premier League, where Newcastle's new era is underway, but it started with a defeat. This is now eight Premier League games without a win, and it looks as though it may have been Steve Bruce's last game in charge of the team. At the moment, he's still in charge, but this could literally change from one minute to the next. It was his 1,000th game as a manager yesterday, and it actually started pretty well with Callum Wilson grabbing the opener, but... Tottenham turned things around and eventually managed to win 3-2. Of course, it was overshadowed by the medical emergency in the stands, which halted the game for quite some time. And there are some good reports that the person who was affected is in a stable condition in hospital at the moment. So we wish them all the best. As for the new ownership at Newcastle, it looked as though Newcastle fans were really happy because their club has finally been taken over after the Mike Ashley era. But then also a little bit disappointed with the performances they were seeing on the pitch. And of course, you can't just change things that quickly quickly. That was never going to happen that easily. So Steve Bruce does remain under fire. And so does Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. This is a rather interesting one. There are a few reports saying that Manchester United completely backed the manager. But I've got to think that if this goes on, this kind of iffy Manchester United form after the 4-2 loss to Leicester at the weekend, and especially if they struggle in the Champions League, which they've done okay with at the minute, then Ole Gunnar Solskjaer could really, really be looking down the barrel. At the weekend, like I mentioned, Leicester, who have not been in their greatest form of the weekend, put on a stunning performance of 4-2, and it was just the same old sloppy defensive mistakes in Manchester United. They weren't getting close enough, the press wasn't good enough, and they were absolutely punished. The only positive point was that Marcus Rashford was back and back on the score sheet, and Greenwood scored an absolute banger. Apart from that, probably a day to forget for Solskjaer's men. Not 
A day to forget, though. For Mo Salah, Sadio Mane, Roberto Firmino up front for Liverpool, who are unbelievably good. And talk about new eras. It was a new era for Watford under Claudio Ranieri. And like I mentioned, he watched his side get absolutely demolished by a Liverpool team that was just a class above in the 5-0 victory. Next up then, a quick run up of the rest of today's transfer news. Where Aston Villa are interested in Bologna Scottish fullback Aaron Hickey. Luka Jovic has reportedly told Real Madrid that he wants to leave the club ASAP. Burnley are interested in bringing in Chelsea's Ross Barkley in January. And lastly, but not least, despite the fact he's just joined Roma, there were rumours that Jose Mourinho could be tempted to return to Newcastle, but he has completely rubbished those rumours. Next up then, and your Friday feels, where you guys left your predictions in the comment section on Friday's Daily News for some of the weekend's football. And Joseph Wardley correctly guessed that Juventus would beat Roma 1-0. Moise Keane grabbing the winner for them. Next up, and Nikos guessed the Liverpool game 5-0 in Elite 230. Guessed that Lyon would be 2-0 victors over Monaco. Right then, finally we move on to Emoji Mondays. This is where we at One Football throw a couple of emojis down over some of the weekend's hottest action. First up, best player is actually best players, and it's a midfield duo that were unbelievable in Marseille's 4-1 victory over Lorient. It's Dimitri Payet and Matteo Guendouzi. Guendouzi, the former Arsenal man, managed to get an assist and two goals, and Dimitri Payet provided a hat-trick of assists. Both of them in stunning form this weekend. Next up in the crazy moment goes to Luis Felipe. Oh my my word. What was going on? Lazio beat Inter Milan 3-1. At the end of the game, he decided to celebrate by kind of jumping on and hugging Inter Milan's career. It was so bizarre. He got a red card after the final whistle, then was visibly upset and realised that he did something so ridiculous. It was absolute mayhem and definitely a crazy moment. The last but not least, the best result does go to Leicester. Like I mentioned, haven't been in the greatest form. Manchester United come into town and have not lost away from home since last January. And they dispatched them 4-2 in a brilliant victory. 